So after our shoot day today, Marius and I were just walking around downtown Raleigh because it was either that or twiddle our thumbs in a hotel room, which we didn't want to do. We happened upon this place called Young Hearts Distilling. Um, it, ha it looks like it has a pretty cool still in the window, so we thought we would just walk in and see what's going on in there. standing here inside of Young Hearts Distilling Company here in downtown Raleigh. My name is Chris Powers. I'm one of the owners here. We've been open here now at about five weeks. We intentionally set out to be one of the first distillery in downtown Raleigh, and we are working on a 300 liter still, which is actually built for us by a local company called ABS, which is Atlantic Brew Supply. It's a 300 liter combination still, and our goal is to focus on botanical forward spirits, gins, aromatic gins, botanical gins, things that are really flavor forward, uh, as well as different Amari. So Amari is something that's really close to my heart. It's mm -hmm. something uh, not, not only am I of Italian descent, but also uh, it's something that's kind of exploding just kind of nationally now, something that's not really been paid attention to. I think bitter spirits is not something that's really intrinsic to kind of American drinking. What kind of Amari are you guys doing? Like, do you have a specific style that you guys are going to do? Or are you going to like pave the way, like, you know, trailblaze some new stuff or? So we're getting ready to release our house Amaro, which will be the Amaro that we have pretty much year round. That'll be our entry level Amaro where people can come in and that aren't unfamiliar with the spirit or the type of spirit and they could come in and taste that and kind of step foot into Amari and then get jet hopefully you know take the big leap into some of the other stuff that we'll be producing right so our house Amaro is in that vein of Montenegro so citrus heavy not overly bitter really really approachable um, and we're integrating North Carolina ingredients wherever possible you know doing our due diligence with sourcing and making sure that we're buying herbs and botanicals that are like sustainable and actually are coming from the right people all right I'm not gonna pretend like we didn't have like a whole side conversation right. <laughs> about this still <laughs> And we re I sure. really want to talk a little bit more about this still. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, sure. if I'm not remembering the last five minutes yeah, yeah. Uh, well, but this is the first still built by this company. Yes. Like, this is a brewing company that this is their like first showpiece. Yeah. I mean, it's a thing of beauty. So the still was actually built for us by our friends at Atlantic Brew Supply. This is their first foray into building distilling equipment. They have an overseas partner, which they have heavily vetted, worked with for a long time in their main business, which is would be a building beverage tanks or tanks for the brewing industry. So this still is a combination still, gives us the ability to make whiskeys, brandies, and also to distill clean white spirits or clean clear spirits like gins, vodkas, and some of those other things that need to be run through the column and th over the plates. Our goal here is to be a diverse distillery. We want to be presenting spirits and kind of doing part of the education here in-house. And so we will be presenting a bunch of different uh, spirit releases throughout the next six months. So you're saying that the distillery has been around for five months or the company that run, like owns it has been around for five months? Well, actually, the business is, the distillery in this space has only been around for about five weeks. The business that owns the overall, the overarching umbrella business, which is called Trophy Brewing Company, has been in business since 2009. We opened up here in our original space uh, as the Busy Bee Cafe, followed our passion for craft beer and then micro brewing and continue to grow and stay creative. And this is the next step in our, our progression. I'm wondering like what makes your story and your sort of your spirits unique or what makes your approach to these spirits different from other ones? Like when I, you know, if I see a product on the shelf from your gin, what is, the, what is the story behind that gin that makes it, that separates it from any other gin that I see on the shelf? What you're going to get from our gins here, and even our Amari, or the botanical forward spirits, are all going to have a taste of North Carolina. So as we're sourcing these herbs and these botanicals that we're using in all these spirits, we're thinking about North Carolina first. Where can we get it local? Where can we get it from people that we know are responsible growers, or people that are responsible farmers, or people that are small businesses trying to get off the ground? We're reaching out to them and saying, hey, listen, we'd love to use your lavender in our gin. We'd love to talk to you about our rose hip. And do some of the, that little extra legwork, so you'll be able to taste Amari that's inspired by living in North Carolina. You'll be able to taste gins that are inspired by the flavors of North Carolina right. and where we are in the state. Downtown Raleigh really reminds me of Los An of downtown Los Angeles in a lot of ways. When I first moved to Los Angeles uh, in 2000, which is like almost 21 years ago now, there was nothing going on in downtown. It was uh, very dangerous. There wasn't a lot of restaurants there. I was actually working as a bike messenger in downtown, and so all of all of the business was focused down there. But at four o'clock, when people would typically start to leave work, it was done and it was in a ghost town. And really what brought it back was the beverage industry and the food industry. All these different bars started opening up and that's when the gentrification started to happen. And so like, I guess I would just like to you to talk a little bit about like kind of where you fit into that story and then also what the neighborhood here is like then and now. So Foundation was probably the first cocktail bar that opened up in downtown Raleigh. And that was late 2008, early 2009. And they, those guys really were focusing on domestic spirits. So things that were only distilled in America. And then wine 
mines regionally, only from within something like 200 miles of Raleigh, North Carolina. A real focus on local. They were the first people that were doing cocktails, that were doing fancy cocktails and high-end wines from Virginia, North Carolina, and really putting a focus on the ingredients that happen in this area, that grow in this area. I worked there, I started as part of the opening team and I worked for a few months into the opening and until we were ready to open in this location, but that, was, that place is always near and dear to my heart. It was a place where I really got into cocktails and I really started taking some of the things I had learned, unlearning those things, and, and learning things to, to be done the right way there. So those guys really set were the catalyst of I think cocktails starting here in Raleigh. You know, since then there's been a lot of other people that have kind of taken up that that sword and you know the Fox Liquor Bar, the folks yeah. who are at uh, Haymaker, you know, even raising the standard of what's expected in a bar and a restaurant in uh -huh. town happened because of people like that. Right. You know, you couldn't just go, you don't just order a fancy rum and coke when you come to a place, you know, you expect a cocktail because that's what the effort is being put into, you know, right. as a restaurant. All right, so just from looking around, it's pretty obvious that this is not just a distillery. Right. Do you serve food? Or are you part of that like private club license they have to have in North Carolina? That, that's a good question because in North Carolina up until recently, you could not serve cocktails in a distillery. You could not serve food in a distillery. It had to be like a clandestine operation. So here at Young Hearts, we do serve food five nights a week. We're open every Wednesday through Sunday. We serve dinner. And then on, sad, on Sundays, we're going to get re we're getting ready to start serving brunch. So you can come in, grab a cocktail. You can get a bottle of spirits and take it with you to go. We are the very first distillery in downtown Raleigh, as well as the first distillery in the area that's serving food and it's a full restaurant concept. All right, as you come into the building, you see on the left hand side is our uh, 300 liter still which we talked a little bit about come on through then we have our new bar top we have some cocktails that are aging right now in a barrel the, the cocktail the actual barrel rack was built by our friend at rebuild raleigh so back here we have our full service bar we serve our own spirits alongside other distillery spirits. On this wall here, you see another barrel rack that was also built by Brian at Rebuild. So we have a little lounge area. We can come and you can have a cocktail on the tables. You can come up here and have dinner. You can rent this for private parties. And we have our neon that was built for us by our friends at uh, Glass Studios. Nate Glass and the artists over there put this thing together for us. So a huge outdoor area, which allows our guests to come in, have a meal, sit down in the lounge areas, enjoying this downtown Raleigh. The upstairs area. Um, so right now we are above the main dining area downstairs. Really feels disconnected, but still in the same space. We have our upstairs bar, which is full service, which services the patio, and Andy's up here making cocktails. 